Hi, good everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with the godfather of college basketball, James Brown, and we welcome you back along the road to the Final Four. Still ahead for us on this busy basketball Saturday, the West and Southeast Regional Finals. In about 40 minutes from now, Arizona and Missouri will tip off in Los Angeles. Then at 6 Eastern time, Duke and Purdue will play for the Southeast Regional spot in the Final Four. Quickly updating the women's road to Richmond in the women's East Regional action today, North Carolina beat Connecticut 81 to 69, the first team to advance to a Final Four. I said 40 minutes, it's gonna be less than that, about 15 minutes. Still ahead, we're gonna talk with Coach Nolan Richardson of Arkansas. Stay with us as the road to the Final Four rolls on from Studio 45 in New York City, here on CBS. The Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Wendy's Spicy Chicken Filet Sandwich. Go wild. Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. And by Hertz. For business, for pleasure, nobody does it exactly like Hertz. Best Female Player. The Envelope, Please. The Van Naismith Awards, Sunday on CBS. A live look at the Los Angeles Sports Arena in Los Angeles, where in about 13 minutes now, Arizona and Missouri will kick it off. And Dick Stockton and Al McGuire are at courtside. We'll send you out there shortly. Right now, there you see the brackets, eight teams that remain here in the NCAA tournament. And let's go to Dallas right now, where the number one team in the country, Arkansas, and President Clinton's favorite coach is standing by. And Nolan Richardson, welcome to the Road to the Final Four. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you all for inviting me. Nice to see you. Now, you look at North Carolina, you look at Kentucky, UConn, Indiana, UCLA, Kansas, UMass Temple, all those teams out here. Is that scary at all, the way this tournament's <laughs> been going? I tell you, uh, when we first started into the tournament, I, I made the statement that uh, once you pick the 64 teams, any of them can beat you, and, it, and it's proven out to be true. Parity is certainly here. Nolan, I tell you, having spent the past couple of weeks with you, uh, I learned that pressure is something that you actually relish in the fact that you are number one. You said you enjoy that position. Well, I, as I said many times before, James, uh, it took me a while to get here, and, and, and I, I'm behind in the race. I got to just outrun everybody that's in front of me. And so, therefore, you know, pressure is what you make of it. And, and I've had that all my life, so I don't have a problem with it. You talk about the pressure of your team and the 40 minutes of hell. Quite honestly, can anybody beat you now, Nolan? Well, I think any night that you're not playing well, anybody can beat you. I think the nights that we play well, it'll take a very good basketball team to beat us. And uh, we have been playing well as of late, especially in the tournament in the last two ball games. Coach, thanks for joining us uh, briefly. We'll see you tomorrow here on CBS, and good luck to you. And uh, the president give you any hints? Not yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be back here on the road to the Final Four in a moment. Stay with us. Heading down. We're about to select our first team uh, that will go to Charlotte, uh, Arizona and Missouri, about to tip off in just under nine minutes here on CBS. And we're going to send you out to Dick Stockton and Al McGuire in Los Angeles after this. Hope you enjoy the game. We'll see you throughout the day. for the West Regional Final here in the NCAA Tournament between the Arizona Wildcats of the Pac-10 and the Big 8 Missouri Tigers. And the winner of this game will move on to the Final Four next week in Charlotte. This will be the first piece of that puzzle. Hello again, everyone, along with Al McGuire. I'm Dick Stockton. Al, this is truly the Redemption Regional, and here's why. Missouri has never been to the Final Four. Arizona has made it only once, and these schools are fighting less than successful tournament appearances in the past, so there might be added incentive besides getting to the Final Four. But how would you characterize these two teams? First, Mizzou, I think, is a brute force type of team. They'll bang you down low and they'll bang you up high, and when they set their screens, their killer screens, they'll ring your bell. And Arizona, a different set. Arizona wants 
it's more an open court, more of a flexible type game. But on the baseline, they also play physical. They're like having an iron fist with a velvet glove. Let's talk about Melvin Booker, who had a big three-point basket to start their overtime victory over Syracuse. He's a key for them. Well, Booker, what he does, he can hit the three from NBA range. But when he takes you down low, he'll post you up and score over you. His legs and his bodies are so strong. And maybe the best backcourt tandem in the country is Damon Stoudemire and Khalid Reeves of Arizona. They have averaged 36 points between them. Well, Reeves, uh, inside, outside, you got to make a decision. You want to stop him outside, and then as he drives, you double-team on him. So that's the story now, and Stoudemire, who did not score in the first half of the uh, game against Louisville, however, a great playmaker for the Wildcats. Yeah, he's a true point guard. He penetrates, likes to hit the spot up or dish, but I don't think he has, I think he has to shoot more dick. Al, what kind of game do you anticipate? I look the game to be a combination of over 170 points combined both teams. I look for a game who's ever hidden from three-point land is going to win. And right now for the starting lineup, so let's go to our public address announcer, George Harris. Good afternoon. Eight and lost five. The Missouri Tigers have gotten to this West Regional Final by beating Navy, Wisconsin in impressive fashion and a big win in overtime after losing a big lead against Syracuse with five minutes to go. They were up by 11, but they defeated Syracuse, the Arizona Wildcats, and they started off by beating Loyola of Maryland. They beat a tough Virginia team from the ACC and totally outclassed Louisville, a team that never had the lead. Arizona led from wire to wire in their semifinal. Didn't have a close ball game, but the one thing you're going to watch, when will Arizona put the pressure on Missouri? They show the weakness against Syracuse. Missouri will be in white, and Arizona will be in the red uniforms. The officials, Andre Patillo, Scott Thornley, and Phil Boba. Donnie Gray will be our alternate official today. So Arizona with something to prove, as does Missouri. They took a back seats in their own conferences to other teams who started off hot. Remember, Kansas in the Big 8, UCLA in the Pac-10, but when it was all is said and done, the strength of the conference resides in these two schools. Underway, controlled by the Wildcats. One thing you gotta watch during the game, wherever Reeves go, Missouri will bump him. Stoudemire with the ball, the Wildcats have won 11 of their last 12 games. This is only the second time they've reached the regional final. They try the alley-oop from Geary to O's inside, and a Missouri foul will send O's to the line. Lou Dolson, the Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Uh, was a surprising first play to call an alley-oop. Normally, uh, you wait a while when the body starts sweating. I think it could set the tone for the kind of unorthodox game we might anticipate. The foul is on Kelly Thames. And Owens gives Arizona a 1-0 lead. The Wildcats had all five of their starters scoring double figures in Thursday's win over Louisville. Well, the Wildcats with their three-guard offense want to giddy up, up and down, use the 92 feet, where Missouri really doesn't have a true point guard. They more or less want to set up and grind you. So Missouri will see a press right off the top from the Wildcats. Wouldn't have to wait long. They break it with Winfield, nearly lost his footing. Here's Booker with the ball, guarded by Geary. Geary's the best defensive man in Arizona. Crudup. This is inside. He had the shot on the baseline. So the Wildcats with the lead coming back in a pass inside. And it was last touched by O's. Surprisingly, it seems that Arizona's looking to go inside first. Touchdown pass. Thames. He saves it to Winfield. Throwing over that pressure up court. Missouri has won 18 of its last 19 games. A foul called at the baseline as Lamont Frazier tries to get inside, and the foul is called against Khalid Reed. Missouri's ball out. They've won the only game between these two schools, and that was back in 1984. Lay up, they lay completely off crude up. He was out over 15 feet. Here is Booker with his first shot of the game. He said he was too far out. 
and started to get the mark when he moved inside. They were taking long threes in Thursday's game. Frazier's covering Reed. Frazier's their best defensive ball player. Steal by Thames. Here is Booker. Wakefield, not much of a score. On the baseline, Thames. And the rebound by Holmes. Thames was a hero for Missouri on Thursday. He was wide open that time. Both teams seem to be tight. Here he gets his own rebound. No foul. Good defense. Thames from behind. Missouri has four on three right now. And Kelly Thames travels and turns it over when the Tigers had the number. Well, what happened that time is Gary's such a good defensive player, he blocked the lanes. Then Thames tried to use a hockey move with 360 spin, but he walked. That's Mark Atkins who's come in the game replacing Thames. Neither team has been able to hit in five attempts, and keep in mind, Missouri starts their best defensive people and comes off with the firepower off the bench. They moved in their first cannon, Atkins. He'll rain it out from three points. He's number three, and he's their best three-point shooter. Stoudemire runs his man into a pick and gets the first field goal of the game. They needed to get Stoudemire out of the block. He's been kind of flat offensively the last two ball games. Four to nothing in favor of Arizona. Here it's Crudup working in a fine pass to Winfield. Getting the rebound is Atkins. And the rebound by O's. Arizona leading four to nothing in Missouri is still ice cold. Temple of the game favors the Wildcats and Lute Olsen. Reeves is fouled driving into the paint. Watch Damon here. Make a move. Quick move, he's the point guard, hasn't been scoring that well lately, but this really helps him upstairs in his head. Foul is on Lamont Frazier, so the starting forwards have committed two fouls. Stoudemire misses from the corner, and they're going to have a tied up ball, and it's going to favor the Missouri Tigers. A couple of big bodies in there with Crudup and Blair batting. Missouri 0 for 5 from the field with two and a half minutes gone by in the first half. I think they'll see that pressure all game long. No, eventually will turn them because they don't again have that true point guard. They're going to call Stoudemire for the push. Missouri has held its opposition to 38% shooting in this tournament. And Arizona only 32. So you can see where defense got these teams to the regional finals. And always remember the college game is governed by the guards. The pro game is governed by the baseline. Lamont Frazier very nearly lost that ball. And now Missouri comes back with a five on four. Atkins, the best three-point shooter, misses. Tipped up and in by Lamont Frazier. First basket for the Tigers. So it's been over three minutes since Missouri finally made a hoop. They get it in low now to Blair. Back to Geary in traffic. Reeves for three. And here comes Missouri trailing by two. And Booker travels and he can credit Geary with the defensive play. If you're going to win the game, Arizona, you must put a body on the guys inside. And obviously there was no block out. even team fouls even and a basket by Missouri next time they have possession could even the score here comes the Tigers trap Stoudemire up to Reeves goes for the three he's missed two three-point shots but inside we have a foul and it'll be against Arizona and it's going to be against Joseph Blair for Blair it'll be his first foul, so both teams tight at the start of this regional final. Norm Stewart's Tigers with only one field goal in the scene for Arizona. Here's Frazier trying to work against Reed. Booker gets the basket. Melvin Booker coming in, averaging 18 a game. They're going to double team him. He split it and ended up finalizing on it. Nice back door. Great pass into Reeves from Geary. Reeves got the basket, but the man who made it happen was Reggie Geary, who does so much more. 
that you don't see in the box score for the Wildcats. Here is Olini in the ball game, and he misses a three, the rebound by O's. So Paul Olini, three-point threat comes in in an Arizona turnover. Missouri can tie the score. They're getting their shots, but they're not draining them. Through the working against Blair, trying to get him to pick up another foul, and a good play by Javon Crudup, who's a senior from Kansas City. A little bit outside his range. Tied at six. A little more than five minutes gone by, first half. Got to get Reeves into the offensive flow. Here's Blair. Off the glass. Missouri had it and comes out of the pack with Melvin Booker. Missouri has not had the lead. They can take it here with 14.35 to go in the first half. Atkins on the pass back from Olini. Wild shot, and here's Khalid. Here's Stoudemire. He's got a three. Remember, he was shut out in Thursday night's first half against Louisville. If one guard doesn't score, the other one seems to pick up the slack. They've averaged 42 points between them in this NCAA tournament. Crudup. And Crudup with his second basket in the way. Might have to alternate. Might have to put O's on Crudup and take Blair off. And Blair's a little bit slow defensively. Blair did a good job on Rozier. And for the collapsing zone against Louisville, this is a different set of circumstances. Tipped by Stoudemire. And Lamont Frazier does a good job to prevent Blair from keeping the ball inbound. One point game, Arizona in front. Gee, I believe that Crudup is too quick for Blair. He has real quick moves. That's why I feel that they should put O's on him, have O's play in front of him, and get help from the weak side. Javon Crudup, who had 14 rebounds against Syracuse, the third highest total of the year, and there is Ray O's. We'll see whether they make that defensive switch. Booker, Winfield, Crudup, Frazier, and Thames back in the game. So the starting five back in for Missouri. Crudup looking for help. And wide open for a three is Melvin Booker. Whatever team starts to hit big time from the three-point land should win this ball game. But they got to get Reeves on the scoring. They go down to O's. Tipped in by Blair. Good position by Blair. That time he took the measure of Crudup inside. When Blair gets position, you can't move him without a tank. Missouri already more successful from three-point territory than they were in the first half against Syracuse when they were one for 11 the other night. Frazier driving to the hoop, throws up an air ball. O's keeps it alive. We're tied at 11. Five rebounds for Ray O's of the Wildcats. Off to a hot start. Got to get Reeves scoring. I think he's over three. Inside O's. Oh! drop there Blair fighting and here come the Tigers again tied at 11 with 12.35 on the clock first half Frazier gets it inside Crudup has been hot offensively not that time and Arizona has a chance to untie the game don't forget now Arizona's playing with three guards so they got a lot of mobility they're going inside and here's Stoudemire and he hits another one with a second three-point basket. He's got eight points, and he's the game's high scorer. Here's Crudup again working against Blair. Nothing doing. Frazier on the penetration as it's stripped away by Khalid Reeves. Here's a three-on-one for Arizona, and fire goes in. Foul by Booker. And will shoot two shots. In the early 90s of basketball, you go inside like that and then kick it back out and bang. Now watch this break. Perfect break. Three on two. Reeves feeds the hot hand. Keeps it out of the hand of Blair. You don't give it to the six foot eight, six foot nine guy on fast breaks. Always hit the smaller man. 
Going out of the game for Arizona is Khalid Reeves, who is only one for four from the field, and he said the first indication for me, we're going to have a good game if I shoot my first three-pointer and it goes swoosh. So far, no swoosh. Several substitutions coming in the lineup as Stoudemire on the line for two. Kevin Flanagan, the big man who plays fine defensively against Louisville, has come in for Arizona. Paul O'Linney and Jason Sutherland in the game for Missouri. Flanagan just in there now to neutralize, be a role player, maybe commit a foul or two. Each team has committed three team fouls. Stoudemire makes both free throws, and Arizona has opened up a five-point lead. Tony Gregory. Run in the last three minutes and 18 seconds. Stoudemire, perfect from three-point territory, a far cry from his one-for-eight performance against Louisville on Thursday night. Something that only coaches know. Last game against Syracuse to win against a 2-3 zone for the whole game. You lose your movement, so the next day of practice, you got to get your movement back. Missouri has not got their movement back yet. And here's Olinny, short with a three-point attempt, but Thames battles in. And this freshman from Jennings, Missouri, continues to give the Tigers a surprise effort in this tournament, down by seven. That was a big basket for them. Geary and Olinny is there, and the foul called against Missouri. Each team with four team fouls. Look at the strength and the size. These are building blocks, cinder blocks that Missouri has out there. They have truck bodies and they interchange truck bodies. They're like a group of uh, at a bouncer convention. <laughs> and those are just guards we're talking about. We're not talking about big people. Thames picks up the second foul. You saw Liddy go to the bench. Lamont Frazier back in. Geary hits the first free throw. Reggie Geary who had 12 points against Louisville and also handles the toughest defensive assignment. He held Jalen Rose of Michigan at 12 points when those two teams battled this year. Pretty good effort. Nice pressure up court. Looked to create a turnover. I look for Atkins to take the shot the next time down. They got to get him rolling. Rudolph. And Blair defending. Blair trying to deny Crudup inside. And doing a good job of it right now. They collapse around him, leaving Booker open. This is the three. Crudup fighting him, on, fighting him on three red shirts and the foul called against Arizona. That'll be their 15 foul. And it'll be against Reeves. So Khalid Reeves off to a slow start. Offensively with six points, picks up his second foul. You know, surprisingly, Dick, you say a slow start. We're only, we still got over nine minutes in the first half, but this is a slow start for him, especially up the, the other shots in the last three tournament games where he's been really on fire. Reggie Smith coming in the game. Thames goes out. Smith, by the way, had been injured. He was the uh, start point guard for two of the last three years for Missouri. Tigers, one for six from three-point territory. Crudup will get the basket, and Blair picks up his second foul. Big basket for Crudup, and it looks like they got to rely on the big people inside now. Well, as I told you earlier, he's just too quick in his move. Watch how quick his moves are. They're just a little bit too quick for Blair. He neutralizes them right there. He can end up with an old-fashioned three-pointer. You know, you're right. We talk about how Reeves is getting off to a slow start. What about Adrian Autry, who was scoreless in the first half and Thursday, ended up with 31 points in the game. And they would have counted that shot when he's on his knees. Syracuse be playing this afternoon. Seven-point Arizona lead. Missouri has trailed throughout. Geary guarded by Booker with 8.45 remaining in the first half. Winner goes on to Charlotte in the final four next week. Here's the trap on Reeves, and they call the foul on Crudup. That's his first. I personally wouldn't have Crudup double-teamed because he's too important to the club. He, he plays their center position, but he's truly a number four, a power number four. <laughs> Almost took his head with it. That's the 15 foul on Missouri. Arizona's committed six. Oh, Missouri still has a foul to give. Bowles working against Atkins. Atkins blocks the shot. He kept his position. Now Lamont Frazier comes down. Seven-point lead for the Wildcats. 
Reggie Smith. And Atkins. Wild three. Through to keeps it alive for Missouri. Dottemeyer playing a tough defense on the perimeter on Lamont Frazier. And they're going to call Geary with the foul as Booker tried to beat him off the dribble. And that will be the 17 foul. And Missouri will shoot one and one. Geary's first personal. At the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Here's Melvin Booker, the best free throw shooter for Missouri at 83%. This is not a good free throw shooting team, but Booker is the exception. You wonder how Arkansas ever beat this club by 51 points earlier in the season. Because uh, we all know that Arkansas are known riches and haven't gone on a roll, but to, to beat this club by 51 doesn't seem possible. But don't you think, Al, that in any game or whatever the situation, you could get a, a wild score like that in a blowout? Early in the season. And this was the second game of the year. Five-point lead now for Arizona. Missouri coming back. They have been trailing by nine. 7.45 to go. Flanagan loses the ball. Good collapsing defense by the Tigers. But Missouri has been un unable to get unleashed from three-point territory. And a pushing foul. And once again, Missouri will go to the line to shoot one and one. That foul will be against Flanagan. He's picked up two. Lute Olson's Arizona Wildcats, who did not turn over the ball much against Louisville, have already turned it over six times in this game. Missouri's tenacious defense. I'm still waiting for Arizona just to tease them with a zone. To tease uh, Missouri with a zone. Put it out there, make them prove themselves against the zone. Bruda misses the front end of the one and one. Still going the same way, Arizona's ball. 7.31 to go, that's Khalid Reeves who has averaged 30 points a game in the NCAA tournament. Right now, he has managed just six. Geary tried to get it inside. It might have been kicked away by Arizona, and it was. They're going to say it was Reeves who kicked it, so Missouri, and that'll be the seventh turnover against the Wildcats. In that type of a situation, the referees try to catch each other's eyes to see who has the call. Bova made the call after looking at the other two refs. Missouri trying to come back in this game, trailing by five. Smith will very rarely shoot. He's in there to open up Booker. Atkins will shoot. And now Missouri, one for eight from three-point land. And Stoudemire at the other end, travels. Big time move that time by O's. Outstanding. You knew the water bug was going. He's perking. Missouri, one for eight from three. They were one for 11 against Syracuse in the first half from three-point territory in Thursday's game. So they're struggling again here. Great feed inside from Smith to Javon Crudup. And Crudup now with eight points, second to Booker's nine. Flanagan has to play him before he gets the ball, not after he gets the ball. Arizona's lead is three. The Wildcats were up by nine with nine minutes to go. Reeves throws up a air ball. He was only six feet from the hoop. So Reeves having an off game so far. Geary got a hand on it. And they're going to go Arizona's way. Planning kind of bumping and grinding crude up, but Kudup doesn't even know he's there. He's so strong. Got him caught on his outside hip and... No way you can stop him with an inside position in the ball like that. But that's the man that the Tigers have to go to, Javon Crudup, because they're not hitting from the three right now. So Crudup has been their savior, and the Tigers have come back trailing by three and have run off six straight points in this game. There's Missouri one for eight from three-point territory. And they are good normally for ah! three. Reeves has it batted away. Crudup and Williams, Corey Williams gets the basket and draws the foul. Alert play by the sophomore from Batavia, Illinois. Outstanding.
outstanding block here by Crudup. He comes across, catches a piece of it, but then Williams stays in tight. Nice athletic ability. Can use a little bit more strength in the upper body. That will come in the next couple of years. Lamont Frazier is coming the game, and Booker goes out. Booker goes out with nine points. Here's Geary coming back in, and Khalid Reeves goes to the bench. He has scored six points and has picked up two personals. Now, if the last foul shot is made here, watch for heavy pressure up court trying to turn over the Tigers. That's the first miss from the free throw line as Williams could not connect on the three-point play. The Wildcats six of seven from the line. Both teams are in a one and one Atkins trying to set a screen for Smith. Under six minutes to play first half. Vic Stockton and Al McGuire in the West Regional Final. Winner goes on to Charlotte. Right. on the shot clock. Right now, it's all black and blue screens being set up by the Tigers, Mizzou. Smith with a three, and that was an NBA three he attempted. Frazier gets the rebound, works his way in, and Geary had it and lost it to Atkins, who's fouled. Then we'll shoot a pair at the line. That was a frustration foul. The Wildcats had the ball. They got off to the races too soon, trying to make it an open court game. The ball was stripped. But Al, if someone would have told you that Khalid Reeves would have only six points, but Arizona would have a five-point lead. The Wildcats are fortunate right now as Flanagan picks up his third foul and goes out. But well, one of Reeves' problems, if he doesn't hit one of his first two uh, threes, he kind of works on him. He tightens up a little bit. He even pulls his shot a little bit. He wants to hear the swoosh. Atkins, 53% shooter, misses the first one. Missouri is three for seven from the free throw line, so they've missed free throws and threes here in the half, trailing by four points. Just token defense up court here, just to get a couple of ticks off. This is the man with the ball. He'll set it up, Stoudemire. Joe McLean trying to work his way in. He's a quiet, unsung player for Arizona, and Stoudemire stepping on the line. will turn it over. Another turnover for Arizona. That's ten in the game. The ref might have missed that one if he didn't look down. <laughs> he brought the attention of the ref to look down on his foot. Reeves is back in the game. And McLean goes out. The lid trying to find his shooting eye as we wind down to five minutes to go in this first half. Missouri has trailed all the way, working their way back in this one without the benefit of the three-point shot. Not working for him. Here's Atkins. Plus, they're doing an excellent job, Dick, with uh, Booker on the bench. Here he is open. Fires inside. Oh, a foul out of Corey Williams. And a great pass from Geary inside. A great catch. That was almost an impossible catch. That ball was humming. That was a fastball on the <laughs> outside corner. Watch this pass, how quick it's thrown and how hard it's thrown. Now the control that way, you're up in the air, then finish making the basket. You can tell me about these other athletes in the world. The greatest athletes in the world are basketball players. They're truly ballerinas in the sky. And Corey Williams, who battled anemia late in the year, had various illnesses, lost 14 pounds on the receiving end of a Geary pass. The foul was on Javon Crudup of Missouri. That's his second foul. And Missouri now with their 17 fouls, so it'll be one and one for Arizona. There's two shots here. Last one he put up with a dog, so is this one. Wow. He made the basket, needed only one and a pushing foul as Atkins gets the rebound, and Missouri now with their eighth foul. Atkins, you can't push in the open like that. 15,000 people seen it. No, I mean, pushed. They've seen it down by the ocean front, about eight miles from here. <laughs> <laughs> Norm Stewart hasn't said a word. He just put his hands out. So Geary will go to the line and shoot one and one. Geary, 55% shooter from the line. Arizona, six of eight thus far. Gary is really the, the spark plug. He's the emotional leader of this team. And as you mentioned, their best defensive player. And this game will probably come down to defensive play. He got a both. Arizona leading by eight points, 31 to 23. Here's their full court pressure. Ooh, they were fortunate to get that through. Very close. 
I'll tell you, Corey Williams has done a fine job coming in in this ball game with a great catch and a basket. They're now forcing Olinny into a travel here. Olinny did not look up court. He turned around to catch the ball, and he looked up. Williams in position, created the walk. The Arizona's bench has taken the play away from Missouri's subs in this first half. Here's Reeves working against Lamont Frazier. Eight points for Khalid Reeves. Like I said earlier, they went a full game against zone at Syracuse. They lost their movement. They haven't got it back yet against the man-to-man -man of Arizona. Wildcats have opened up their biggest lead, double-figure lead, and Finner drives in for the basket. Marlo Finner, his middle name, believe it or not, is Thomas. Marlo Thomas Finner gets Missouri back to within eight. Finner either scores in bunches or doesn't score. On the corner, Reeves. He's starting to get going now. He's feeling it two in a row for Reeves, and he's in double figure. Now he's off to the races. Every time he touches the ball offensively, Reeves will look for it. Atkins down low to Frazier. He'll double him. Here's Atkins for three. Again, Missouri struggling from three. It's stolen inside by Olinny and an alert layup by Olinny, who has averaged 10 points for Missouri coming off the bench this season. The strength of Missouri is that if you hit them while they're shooting, they can still score. It doesn't affect them. They work the weights almost every day. Stoudemire going for another three. He has hit four three-point baskets, uh -oh. and Arizona has opened up their biggest margin of 11. I'm telling you, the best guard combination in colleges today are these two guys. They got 26 between them, and Missouri's still firing away and missing from outside. Finner that time. Give it to Reeves. Oh, he, here he had the right idea. And Missouri, Norm Stewart quickly rushes Javon Cruda back in the ballgame. Missouri is one for 11. Is that familiar from three-point territory, Al? And they had to get, but well, here's the key right now. Smith is in there, which allows Booker to go to the number two position. Look for Booker to start to break out in the next three minutes of this half. Lamont Frazier picking up his third foul. He's one of their defensive aces. Booker still with nine points. Geary misses the front end. 11-point Arizona lead with under three minutes to play in the half. Olinny trapped with two defenders, swatted away by Owens. Reeves, outstanding interior defensive play and a blocking foul called against Reggie Smith. Great block by the six-foot-eight-inch Ray Owens. Here comes a fly swatter. <laughs> wow, did he leave the ground fast? <laughs> that is the 10th team foul against Missouri. So now it's two shots from here on out for Arizona, and Reeves will be on the line. Also two shots the other way. Both teams will be in the Super Bonus. Here's Khalid Reeves. Interestingly about Reeves is that he doesn't follow the game. He doesn't watch television. He doesn't watch basketball. doesn't read about it. He really doesn't know who the other powers are. He shows up for basketball and plays it. But basically, he's not a basketball fan, per se. He sounds like Al McGuire. <laughs> no. Nah. You may not have a VCR, but you follow the game. And Reeves coming back now with 12 points. He has 16, and Reeves, who started slowly, has been cooking lately, and to combine, they have 28 of the Wildcats' 40 points. One of the things that helps him physically is that Geary picks up the key guard on the other team. O's got a hand of it and actually prevented Olinny from getting an easy layup. So Arizona, watching, obviously, the tape of the other night when Missouri tried this many times against Syracuse. Lane in the game for Arizona. Thames and Reggie Smith. Missing is Olinny. Thames with a no-look pass, but they double down on O on uh, Kruda. Get over to Booker. Here he's doing a great job on Booker so far. How about Thames, who has scored only three points after 24 against the Orange Here's Kruda against single defensive coverage, and he gets the basket. Kruda now with 10. Loose 
ball inside. Stoudemire had it knocked away by Smith. Here is Olini. Goes around McLean. Gets the layup, and there's the strength of Missouri going to the basket. Excellent move. They needed a few baskets here going in at halftime. They can cut it down to about six, seven points. They'll be sitting nice. Nine-point game. Arizona had been up 13. Coming off the screen, McLean. Missing a three outside is Geary. And now Missouri coming back. Ooh. And they're going to call the pushing foul on Booker. They say Booker ran into Geary. I'll tell you, Arizona is really anticipating that long home run pass by Missouri after missed basket. He was free. It took him too long to throw the ball down. Nice interception here by the athletic Geary. And I, you see, he tried to get out of the way. He didn't undercut him. And the crowd's absolutely wrong. Melvin covered it perfect there. It just so happened that Geary, with his athletic ability, went so high. So it'll be two shots at the line for Reggie Geary shaking up a bit. And Booker really upset. That's his second foul, but uh, I think uh, you're right, Al, and Booker uh, feels it's a little bit of an injustice there. Of course, Missouri waiting for Booker to start cooking. He's been at nine points for a long while here in this first half. Geary hits the first free throw, 55% shooter, but he's five for six. And Arizona going to the line a good deal today. This is their 15th free throw attempt. 131 remaining in the half. Geary makes them both, and the lead is 11. Handle that pressure real easy. There's a Linny. He's got the three. Only their second of the game. Two for 13 for Missouri from downtown. They're going to need the threes in the second half. Here's McLean. He goes for three and answers. Olini's three-point basket. That's a dagger in the heart. It's starting now. Missouri is perking up. Beams from the baseline, but Crudup keeps it alive for the Tiger. Smith is open for the moment. This should be good. Olini. Nope. And Arizona comes down with it with 45 plus. Here is Owens. And he is fouled. They had Olini and Smith, and Missouri did not defend that half of the court. And Owens, who is hit in the face, will shoot two shots. Here's a blue collar. Here's putting the guy down. But Olini makes some late move to him. But what I like about it, he also commits his body up off the ground. He doesn't stay down low. See a late recovery here. Comes over and says, hey, I'm going to give you no three-point play. I'm going to force you to go to the line. It's an automatic bonus for his two-shot foul. And Ray O's and Joseph Blair, who don't get the attention that Reeves and Stoudemire get on this Arizona club, but they performed well in the first two games of this tournament. O's is a 63% free throw shooter in Arizona, making the most of their chances at the line in this half. Lou Dolson looking to get to the final four for only the second time in Arizona's history. He took Iowa there when he was head coach many years ago. They could have won it all if the kid didn't go down. Right. And of course, in 88, Arizona lost to Oklahoma in the national semifinals. And Lou Dolson trying to bring the Wildcats back. 12-point Arizona lead. Well, the differential is about four-plus seconds. Arizona's biggest lead was 13 here. They're up by 12. Look for Booker to get the shot. They got to first get the ball in his hands. Setting a screen for Smith. Eight on the shot clock. And there is Thames from the corner. Missed the three and the rebound by O's. Williams got the clearing out and a foul with 3.2 seconds to go. They want to say that that was a three-point shot and he deserves three fouls. Now, we're going to have a little discussion with the referees. If they did call the shooting foul, then he should get three shots. Let's see where he left the ground. 
to see. Nope, the refs are right again. It'll be a good two, call. Yep, two shot situation. And here is Stoudemire at the line. He has scored 16 points. He has hit four three point baskets. And Arizona with 3.2 seconds remaining in the half can establish their biggest lead of the game. Lute Olsen's Wildcats are 14 for 18 from the free throw line. And Stoudemire can add another point here. And he does. Biggest lead now for the Wildcats. Reggie Smith. And no basket. And it's been all Arizona. They have never trailed in this game. And didn't make it in time on the rebound. You go right here. You guarantee the clock is over. No chance. Missouri 2 for 16 from three-point territory. And that's the end of the first half with a score. Arizona 48, Missouri 34. Pat O'Brien and James Brown will be along with the Pennzoil at the hand. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by the new Chevy S-Series line of trucks. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by John Deere, makers of quality lawn and grounds care equipment. Doyle at the half with Arizona in the driver's seat. A couple of big-time coaches are going to come in here and break down the game. Kentucky's Rick Pitino, Wisconsin's Stu Jackson, along with James Brown. They're also clearing their throats for another edition of the Coach's Opera. JB will not be in that one. All that and more coming up on the Benzoil at the half. Stay with us. Path of Arizona continues at this pace. They will be our first team to go to the Final Four, but there's a half to play. They lead Missouri 48 to 34. A reminder that coming up at 6 o'clock this afternoon, or about there, our next game in the Southeast Regional Final, the Blue Devils of Duke against the Boilermakers of Purdue. That tip is at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. A couple of guys waiting to break this game down for you. Let's send you over to the coach's corner now. And uh, JB, James Brown, take it. All right, Patrick, thank you very much. I know one guy who's not surprised at the halftime lead that Arizona is enjoying. Rick Pitino, of course, of Kentucky. Stu Jackson, who was an assistant to you at Providence in the Knicks, he didn't listen to you. JB, he didn't listen to Providence, didn't listen in New York, and he wouldn't listen on this game. I thought Arizona would win it for a variety of reasons, and it's certainly not over. Stu thought Missouri would go to the foul line the whole night. They've <laughs> gone to the foul line eight times. I love it. Uh, I love it. I, I thought one of the keys to the first half was that Missouri is forcing the three-point shot. They're two for 16, where Arizona has taken it patiently. They're five for nine. That's a, a 15 to six differential, nine swing, points uh, swing. Stu, I, I think it'll have to change in the second half. Missouri's going to have to drive more on Arizona. Without question, you have to understand my prediction uh, for Missouri. My view is a little tainted. We faced a team in the tournament uh, against Missouri where they shot 68 percent, 12 for 19 from the three-point line, and got 62 percent off their bench. Well, the one thing you should try next time is play a little defense. Yeah, well, that, that would have helped. <laughs> well, speaking of defense now, Arizona, so much is focused on the offensive end, Rick, but their guards, superb defense. The three best slap-down defensive players I feel in college basketball are Corey Beck of Arkansas, Dan Cross of Florida, and this gentleman coming up right here. Khalid Reeves is one of the best at slapping down off the ball and then creating a breakaway for himself. There it is. He slips it clean. He is 6'2", he's over 200 pounds, he's strong, he's powerful, and he's a great finisher. This, to me, is not only a great backcourt in college basketball, but two future pros in Stoudemire and Reeves. Now, Khalid Reeves has 12 points to help the Arizona cause. Damon Stoudemire right now is on fire. He's got 18 points in the first half. I tell you, if Arizona is, in fact, to be a little weak, it's downstairs in the middle. Why not go to Javon Crudup a bit more? Well, yeah, that's part of uh, Missouri's problem. While Missouri's defense is really doing an excellent job of taking away Missouri's three, okay, Arizona, okay, is now allowing opportunities for Crudup in the low post. That's not the way Missouri primarily wins basketball games. In this case, it's an excellent move by Javon Crudup, okay, with the easy slam. But for Missouri to come back in this basketball game, they've got to get better perimeter play and definitely better three-point shooting. 
Okay, now adjustments from Arizona standpoint. Obviously, things are going well, but what would you expect them to try to emphasize even more? Well, I think uh, Arizona has to say Missouri's going more inside in the second half. They're two for 16 from the three. They're going to go away from it more. They have to be ready to guard and double down on the interior. Missouri? Yeah, I, I really think of Missouri's case because Arizona has really pressed out their defense to the perimeter. Missouri's a penetration team. They need to get more of it in the second half to really open up that inside-out game for the three-point shot. Okay, and now if you're telling Missouri something as far as the second half is concerned, what would you do? The game's far from over. A 14-point deficit is nothing the way this game is being played. They have to go inside, and then the threes fall. If you go inside to out, the threes will fall. You want to change and listen to the coach now? No, without question, I'm going to stick with my prediction the same way as I did as an assistant. I think Missouri's going to make a good run at this game in the second half. You taught him well. I know another guy who's very definitive, Pat O'Brien. Hi, JB. Thank you. The coaches seem pretty calm when they draw up the plays for somebody else's team. Of course, when they're on the court, they can turn loud and dramatic, especially if they think it will influence the tenor of the game. Use that for a recruiting tool. Coming up, the second half, Arizona, Missouri. Going to send you back to Dick and Al right after this. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil, the motor oil you can rely on for performance, protection, and quality. Play, but Missouri has come back in this ball game. Two teams looking for vindication. They have had. Tournament failures in recent years. Arizona has been to the Final Four once. That was back in 88, and Missouri looking for their first trip to the Final Four. Thames with a jumper. He was open, and it's still Missouri's ball. From the start of the game, Arizona's been man-to-man -man and had never left. Now and then, they've been putting some full-court pressure, and in comes a new wave of Wildcats. Stoudemire, Geary, and O's have all come in the game for Arizona, so Lute Olson may sense that this is a time that he has to close the door on Missouri's run with nearly 11 minutes to go. Here is Booker looking for three, way off the mark, and Olini fights in. Finner tries to keep it alive, and again, it's Missouri's ball. Well, I'm saying, watch now. It's a lot of physicalness. They're not buying a bucket in there at all, but they get multiple shots. They're getting two, three shots each time down because of their bodies. But this Booker has to get moving, has to get offensively in the zone. Missouri is three for 20 from three-point range. Olinny makes it three for 21, and the Tigers just can't click from outside, trailing by nine. Reeves with a move against Frazier. What a move by Reeves, shake and bake. And now 16 for Reeves and 36 between them, Reeves and Stoudemire. And a blocking block shot by O's that time as Finner tried to get it in. Arizona getting a second win. Here is Geary, and he's hit and fouled hard. Watch Reeves here make a nice move. Good, good fake, pull up. Now they're banging down low. Watch his physicalness inside. Now I, I thought he got all leather on that one. We're talking about Thames, Kelly Thames. He got all leather and uh, the red shirt hit the deck hard, but it could have been such a hard leather. shot from the leather. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Thames with his third foul and here is Geary. Makes the first free throw. Trudup has come back in for Missouri. Remember, he's playing with three fouls, but Norm Stewart now knows that he can't waste any more time with his big man on the bench. Geary now eight for nine from the line and a 13-point Arizona lead. 
Here is Olini in the lane. Muscles his way in, and Stoudemire gets another rebound. He's got nine. Nine rebounds for Damon Stoudemire, along with his 20 points. Geary is open. He's got it. That's a two-point basket for Geary. And now Missouri put on their run, and Arizona answered it as they have throughout this game. And a 66-51 lead is their biggest of the game. Give it credit to Geary and stopping down, shutting down almost completely Brooker. That was Reeves, and that'll be his third. And Arizona now with their 17 foul, and it'll be one and one on the free throw line. Lamont Frazier on the free throw line. Frazier, 68%. From the line, he's been an unsung hero for Missouri this season. Outstanding defensive player. Yep, in high school, he played center. They've used him in five different positions at the university. Ah, misses the one and one. Crudup gets the rebound. In a crowd of red shirts, gets the basket. Crudup for now with 14. It's time, Tiger, to put your full court pressure on. The clock is getting to be very important. It's almost nine minutes left. There's Blair working inside on the reverse layup and the foul. Maybe Thames on the foul. They're trying to work it in against Crudup and have the big man pick up his fourth. And Thames has picked up his fourth personal foul. Now here's Blair. A nice athletic move on the left side of the basket here. And a two-shot foul to hit him. No problem about it. Blair will be on the line. Arizona has had a beast going to the free throw line today. 17 for 21. Blair shoots 44% from the line. And it <laughs> looked like a 90%er on that one. And he doesn't want to be called Joe. No, don't call Joseph Blair Joe. He's a, uh, you know, a guy that may drive a truck would be Joe. That's what he said. But the basketball player is Joseph Blair. And Joseph Blair misses the second free throw. Geary lost it out of bounds. Mark Atkins has come in from Missouri. Interesting, Al, that uh, Missouri has struggled from the threes today, and Atkins, their best three-point shooter, has scored only one point. Grudup <laughs> working inside against Blair, and it's rejected by Geary. And there's a long one, long three by Grudup. That was and Stoudemire coming back pulls up for the jumper. Arizona beating Missouri down the court and open up a 16 point lead. Stoudemire with 22 points. Booker missing an NBA three. That's how far out he was. Missouri just can't click from the perimeter today. And Arizona's defense has been the story as all of their victories have been keyed by their defense. It's really the first pressure shown in the whole game. Good shot by Stoudemire. Crudup with the board and eight minutes remain. Missouri wants to get back in the game. They're going to need a bundle of points in a hurry. Here's Crudup working against Blair. Good defense by Blair. And a foul against Crudup, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. One more, and he's gone. I don't think they can take him out. They might just take him out for a minute and say, hey, be careful, but I would leave him in there. I think they will. been the Stoudemire-Reeves show, but look at the nine rebounds to go along with the 22 points, but how have Reeves and Stoudemire done as we look at the shot chart, Al? Combined, they have 38 points. They average a little bit over 40. Matter of fact, 42 points a game. What you got here is one guy from Pacific, 
Portland and the other guy from the Atlantic, from Queens, Reeves. So we go coast to coast, and they are probably unstoppable. But one of the reasons why they're so good is because Geary is covering the other guard, and they are not wasting any of their energy defensively, so they're completely offensive-oriented. Important point. He takes the pressure off, and Geary also has 12 points of his own today. Here's Geary with a great feed inside to O's. Rebound inside O's, and he'll go to the line. That is the 16th foul against Missouri. And that'll be the 15th foul against Crudup. And so the senior from Kansas City, Javon Crudup, who has been a warrior inside for the Tigers, has fouled out, and that will be the end of his uh, college basketball career, and he's got a lot to be proud of. Oh, no, we got we got over seven minutes left. There's still a prayer left here, so he, he might be able to get the Queens. Yeah, but Crudup is uh, gone, and he really was a, a great player inside. 14 points and six rebounds today. Yep, he's, uh, he's not a true center. He's been a, a fellow that had to adjust down low. He's a true forward. His main strength is strength. He's been a four-year starter. Well, now, what do you do if you're Norm Stewart and you lose your big presence inside? I would move in a smaller man, and I would put pressure all over the court. you got to turn them. you got approximately seven and a half minutes left, which is a lifetime. You're down 16 points. You need a run. You're now down 17. And maybe down 18 as O's. It's the free throw. O's has nine rebounds. Scott O'Meyer also has nine rebounds for Arizona. They've gone to the free throw line. They've prevented Missouri from connecting on the threes, and everything has gone their way. Missouri has missed 15 of its last 17 shots. They're ice cold, down 71 to 53. Here's Frazier from Atkins. And an Arizona foul, their 18 foul, but it'll be two shots on the line. They got to make the foul shot so they can set up their pressure defense. If you don't make the last foul shot, you can't set up the pressure defense. There's O's who fouled, or there is Crudup who fouled out of the game. Meanwhile, Reeves has picked up his fourth. So Khalid Reeves, who has scored 16, has four personals. And they're going to bring him out of the game, it looks like. Joe McClain will come in for Reeves. They're going to bring in Julian Winfield and uh, Jason Sutherland. Sutherland first comes in. Booker goes out of the game. Booker had a hot start in this game, but has scored only 12 points. And these fellows that bring in now are quick ball players that put the pressure on, try to get a few T.O.s. One out of two for Frazier. Lead is 17 for Arizona, winding down with seven minutes to go. Keep the ball in Stoudemire's hands, and you won't have a turnover. fouled and will shoot. He is so quick, he got around two defenders who are trying to trap him. The wing, and Stoudemire will go to the line, and that foul is against Olinny. That's his second and the 17th foul against the Tigers. When you have a ball player like Stoudemire with the ball and trying to delay the clock and open spread the court, your biggest problem is keeping his teammates away from him. Where the problem comes is when a teammate tries to help out, he brings over a defensive player, then they triple team him, and they end up turning the ball over. Booker got a brief rest. He comes back into the game, and Sutherland goes out. So here is Stoudemire, who's been the hero for Arizona today after not scoring in the first half and midway through the second against Louisville on Thursday night in the semifinal. Ended up with 11 points, and right now he's got 23 and one more coming on the line here. You said that you think they're the best guard tandem in the I country. I think so, but mainly because they, they play a three-guard offense, and the pressure is taken off these two great ones defensively because of the third guy, Geary. 18-point lead for Arizona. Atkins hits a three. Atkins who leads the team in three-point baskets. And he's one for nine from the field. So Missouri hasn't gotten much mileage out of their long-distance shooters.
Missouri only four for 24, and Arizona at 33%. That's a pretty good percentage from three. Wow, four for 24. You can't win shooting those numbers. But I think they fouled too soon that time. They had the, a nice setup defensive-wise. They can't be fouling too soon now. They've got to try to get pure turnovers. Here's Geary, the man you talked about. Is he really the unsung hero of the three guards? Doesn't get the... Uh, the ink in the pub that the other two get, but he takes the defensive pressure off. And he'll there'll be a force in the final four. Looks like Arizona heading that way. And the other thing that makes Arizona so good is that Rigdon is really the alternate guy. So if any of these three guards go down in foul trouble or injury, immediately move in Rigdon, who can burn you from outside, and it's a solid ball play. It's also a senior. Got a lot of weapons. Excuse me, he's a junior. I'm sorry. Gary, 10 of 11 from the field. Atkins continue, continues to take three-point attempts from the NBA three-point line. 74 to 57 in favor of the Wildcats. 6.19 to go. And McLean is fouled, and they're going to call that one on Paul O'Linney. That'll be his third foul. Coach is trying to say, hey, let's keep spread. If a guard gets in trouble, flash the pivot. Always release your pressure into the pivot. That last time, McLean picked up his dribble too soon, which makes him extremely vulnerable. He was lucky he was fouled. One player was fouled out of the ball game, Javon Cruda, playing his last game. Lamont Frazier, also a senior, and Atkins, the other senior on the squad for the Missouri Tigers. 6.17 to go. And McLean makes both free throws. Arizona has been impeccable from the free throw line today. 19 point lead. Here's O'Linney firing a three, and Geary gets the rebound. And Arizona pulling away from Missouri. And the number one seed appears to be on its way out of the tournament going into the final four. One way, pulls up and hits. He can do no wrong today. 25 points for Damon. And don't forget, he's only 5'11". It's a red and blue day for the Arizona Wildcats. In Missouri, 4 for 26 from the threes. Arizona, 25 of 31 from the line, and nothing new with Stoudemire and Reeves and what they've done. Just a normal day's work back to the office. Missouri came in with a deep squad, but their bench shooting only 6 for 31. Here is Olinny. A rebound by Blair. Five and a half to play. Arizona, no need to hurry. Reeves is on the bench. Well, they've got Geary and Stoudemire and McLean. And a Missouri foul called against Booker. That'll be his fourth. So Arizona heading for Charlotte, although we have 513 left. What about some of these other matchups? Let's first talk about Purdue and Duke. That's going to be a great game. Grant Hill and Glenn Robinson coming up next. Two of the best ball players in the country. Of course, big dog. No one can stop him offensively. You've got to say, hey, he's automatically going to get approximately 30 or 31 points. And Hill's going to at least give you 22, 23. That's, uh, the key there would be for Purdue. Will Martin uh, compliment Waddell? Will, he, will they both compliment off offensively uh, Glenn Robinson? And Martin had a great game in the last one. That's a look at Bobby Olson, the wife of Coach Lute Olson. Yes, they have five children and ten grandchildren. Stoudemire hits the free throws, and it's 80 to 57. Here's Frazier. Bows. Hey, uh, Missouri has just not gotten in position to get good shots today, and that's Arizona's defense that you could credit. You're not going to get the ball from him. Leave him alone. <laughs> you know what's happened today? I thought a lot of times the Tigers threw the ball up rather than shooting it up. Reeves back in the game is fouled. 23-point lead. 
It's interesting how one player picks up another. On Thursday night in the semifinals, it was Stoudemire who had the cold hand, although he was the outstanding playmaker. He was scoreless for more than a half, ended up with 11. Reeves was the hot scorer in that game with 29 points. Today, Reeves not having a bad game in his own right, but Stoudemire with 28 points, the hero. Well, you know what's happened in about the second or third year that Reeves got tremendous confidence in himself. He's enjoying the game, and uh, he almost transferred out of uh, Arizona in his freshman year. He just didn't feel that Coach Luke uh, expressed himself properly. I don't know what he wanted Coach Luke to say to him, but I guess coming all the way from Queens, New York, and being out there with this fellow here, the Miracle of the Desert, been a great coach. Uh, started uh, in, in the Division One with Long Beach. He took talk to Sharks place then had a great run eight nine years at Iowa I think he's in about his 11th year now at um, Arizona that's right and of course he says doesn't the regular season count when people say your tournament record hasn't been that impressive he says we've had great years winning 20 games perennially here is Finner with the layup and people get annoyed because Arizona doesn't deliver and basically their tournament record has not been all that impressive considering what they have but they're headed for the final four now for the second time I had a lot of pressure on him being knocked out the first two rounds of uh, uh, in the last two NCAAs before this. But uh, he's a great coach. These two coaches are starting to get up there in age. They know how many more chances will they have. Now Luke will have a chance to get to the Final Four. He'll have a chance to be there Monday night maybe and get the gold ring. And of course the redemption story looms and for both of these coaches going in, Norm Stewart's Missouri Club, Six out of the last eight years, they've been knocked out in the first round. They've never been to the Final Four. Arizona, the last two years, didn't get past the first round. So for Lute Olsen's team, this was a year where everyone talked about UCLA as the dominant team in the Pac-10. But lo and behold, here are the Wildcats winning the regional and heading for Charlotte. One of the reasons they're so good, and people won't think this is legit, is that, of course, they went to Australia this summer and played quite a few games. When we won the national championship, we ended up going to South America that year. When we come back, the kids get so much closer together, they get more confidence with each other. Also, this year, surprisingly, Purdue took a trip overseas. They went to Europe, and that bonded the team. And look where they are. They're trying to get into the Final Four against Duke. That's why the NCAA only allows you to take a trip once every four years overseas as a team. Dottemeyer gives it to Reeves, who penetrates and scores. It is now with 21 points. So 49 points between them, Stoudemire and Reeves. Olinney misses the three. In the ball game for Missouri is Derek Grimm, who's 6'9". And the follow-up by Marlo Finner with 3.18 to go, 85 to 61. And Missouri has been held under 35% shooting. And Arizona has been tremendous at limiting teams to under 40% in the tournament. Tough team to beat in the Final Four. Extremely tough. They look gentle, but down low, they're, they're a team that has an iron fist. They just put a velvet glove over it. But they play pretty physical down low. Reeves misses the front end. Arizona will have won 12 of their last 13 games. So they're going to have a chance to advance beyond what they accomplished in 88 when they lost to Oklahoma in the national semifinal. Got a good break when they lost their game just before the tournament. They lost it to Arizona State, their big rival. But I always say it's good to lose the game right before the tournament because the ball players will listen up to you. Stoudemire and Reeves again pushing the ball up court with 2.59 to go. Atkins is going out for Missouri. And Frazier will come back in and Reeves will go to the free throw line. Well, you're right. You know, your theory, which you expressed a couple of weeks before the conference tournament, really came through because of the only team remaining in the last 16 that won their conference tournament was Louisville. All of the top favorites got knocked out. And the other thing I believe, and that should be to the Big Ten and to the Pac-10, because they don't have a postseason conference tournament, it gives you that week to kind of take care of all the dings and little rubs and little sprains that the kids have. 
where I think the postseason conference tournament, if you go to three games, it drains you. 51 points between them. Stoudemire with 27 and Reeves with 24. So Arizona delivered with their sensational guard tandem today. And have opened up an 88 to 61 lead. Their biggest lead of the game. Under three minutes to play. Here is Booker. Baines hits the three-point basket. But it's meaningless now. Reeves gets it into Geary. Showtime. Yep, O's misses and Grin gets the rebound. And Baines hits another three from the other side. Two in a row for the freshman Kelly Thames. Tell you, when they make this all-tournament or regional team up, I think guards are going to make up four or five. <laughs> they could Take put it. the whole five guys as guards out there. But that's the way normally Missouri plays. We've just seen those two uh, uh, shots go down by Thames, Kelly Thames. But their two can cannons did not hit. I'm talking about Atkins and about o Olini. Stoudemire working the clock down to six seconds. Loose ball, good play by Sutherland. Booker with the layup. So if you had to compare the guards, Booker and Stoudemire and Reeves, it was no contest today as Arizona never looked back, leading 88 to 69 with a minute and a half to go. Atkins one for 10, Olinny four for 18. A big part of the story of this game with Missouri struggling from three-point territory. Reeves lays it in. Can't stop those two. 26 points for Reeves. 27 for Stoudemire. And a rejection by Geary. <laughs> Just did a perfect World Cup move there. Celebrating here at the L.A. Sports Arena and in Tucson, the campus of the University of Arizona. An impressive victory. They were impressive in beating Louisville and the same here against Missouri and never trailed in either game. Happiness in coaching is going to the Final Four. When a coach goes for a job any place in the country, the only thing the coach should want to know, if I do my work, can we get to the Final Four? That's the way you decide what's a good job and what isn't a good job. 90 to 69 and celebration. Stoudemire with 27 points, 10 rebounds for the 5'11 junior guard from Portland, Oregon. Williams with an alley-oop, trying to get it in to Joe McClain. is emptying their bench and there's a basket by Chip Walder freshman from St. Louis Missouri Frost is in the game as well and Payne's batted the ball down with less than a half a minute remaining and the Chevrolet players of the game Damon Stoudemire of Arizona, he had 10 rebounds to go along with his 27 points. And Javon Crudup of Missouri, he fouled out with 7.25 to go, but he kept Missouri in the game with his inside play. He scored 14 and had six boards. Sutherland misses the smash. Rigdon to Kelly. Jarvis Kelly. Arizona will go to the Final Four for the second time. Truly the miracle of the desert. And Missouri will finish a season they can be proud of at 28 and 4. Frost misses outside, rigged in the rebound, and that's it. Arizona played like a machine in their two games here in Los Angeles.
Missouri by 20 points. And the Wildcats now raise their record to 29 and 5. And the number two seed has advanced to the final four. So we have the first team in this year's final four. Arizona will play the winner of the Arkansas-Michigan game coming up tomorrow. So the final score, our thanks to Marty Aronoff for his fine work. Arizona defeats Missouri. And when we come back, it'll be Pat O'Brien and company in our New York studio. So long, everybody. Wildcats defeating Missouri 92-72 to in charge of that game in the driver's seat all afternoon long. And coming up here on CBS, going to send you out to Knoxville for our second game today, Duke and Purdue. And that tips right at 6 o'clock. You'll be able to set your watch on that one. And Duke and Purdue and Greg Gumbel and Bill Raftery will be at that one. Right now, we want to send you back out to Los Angeles and Dick Stockton. Dick. All right, thank you very much. What a convincing win for Arizona. You never trailed, Lute, in the two games here. You guys played outstanding defense, the Redemption Regional, and now you got a chance to really redeem yourself, baby. Well, we're just so thrilled for these uh, young people that they've, they've worked so hard. They've had to put up with so much static in our own community in terms of the newspapers and, and people calling them chokers and losers. And I'll tell you, there may be losers in town, but they're not these kids. These, these kids have just been fabulous. They've just went after people, defended hard, and, and played together as a team. Defense the key, of course, in this one, right? The defense has been the key for our program for as long as I can uh, name it, but this one, defense was critical. Al McGuire is here with one of the two great backcourt performers of this team, Damon Stoudemire. Damon, 27 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. They said you guys had choke up in the NCAA. Well, uh, we knew we had that burden on our back. But uh, we just we just wanted to come in and play as hard as we can, and we knew if we got past that first game, that we'll be a real dangerous team, and we proved that, and, and we we went right through the West, and now we're going to Charlotte. How come do you you're in like a zone stage? You feel it early? Yes, I did. Um, I, I kind of been in a shooting slump. You know, I came out real early this morning and shot, and uh, I got my rhythm back. And, you know, I was just letting my shot flow. I wasn't press, pressing to make shots. I was just, it was coming within the confines of the offense. Damon, it's just amazing how you two, you and Khalid, pick each other up. You didn't score much in the first uh, game in Louisville, and Khalid did early, and you ended up both with a lot of points. But today, uh, you seem to have a good karma between you two. Well, yeah, um, you know, me and Khalid, we've been playing great all year together, and, you know, it's just that certain bond that we have. You know, this is our third year together, and this and this has just been a special year for all of us. And, and um, you know, it just feels great to, that we got this win today and we get to advance to Charlotte. Arizona going to the Final Four, and that's the story here for Al McGuire. Dick Stockton sending you down back to our New York studios in Pat O'Brien. All right, Dick, thank you very much. We're all impressed by those guys. And so Arizona advances in the tournament, and uh, they will play the winner of, uh, of Duke and Purdue, which uh, comes up at 6 o'clock. Uh, this afternoon uh, here on CBS. You can set your watches, as we said earlier. And the coaches want to talk about this game and more when we come back here from New York and from all across the country as we have our first team to go to the Final Four in exciting times. Stay with us. Ski? Yes, I am. Yeah. I drive a doctor who looks just like him. So cool. This is great. Keep going. Hey, Billy Packer. Hi. Do you, do you have Prince Albert in a can? Hi. Uh, Grand Hill, please. Tell him this is his coach. Is this Jason Kidd? Jason, baby. Hey, forget about the pros. Why don't you transfer over to Duke? Hi. Yeah, uh, I'm calling for Big Dog. Uh, I'd like to leave a 5 a.m. No, 4 a.m. wake-up call. Yeah, no, it, it's okay. First time in a limo, coach? First time without my good pal Bobby Knight. Think you're going to the Final Four this year, coach? Hey, aren't you Coach Krujewski? You mean Shizhevsky? Yes, I am. And 
And hi, everybody. Again, I'm Pat O'Brien. And did I make a mistake earlier? Yes, I did. Uh, Arizona will play the winner of Michigan and Arkansas. Maybe my first mistake, JB. The whole Only one. Here at 6 o'clock, uh, Coach Kuzguski goes up against Purdue. It's Duke. Krzyzewski goes up against the Boilermakers of Purdue right at 6 o'clock. And meantime, back in Los Angeles, they are cutting the nets down in uh, Los Angeles as Arizona goes up the ladder and what a great moment for Lou Olson and this team uh, after their early exits in the last two tournaments uh, haven't been to the final four since 1988 and it's got to be some moment for anybody and uh, let's go back to uh, our studios here in New York and we're joined by our coaches Stu Jackson Wisconsin and Rick Pitino of Kentucky and uh, what about this Arizona team? We love this backcourt, don't we? Uh, I think it's the best backcourt in the nation, but it's just great to see. Lute Olsen and the players have had this burden the last two years, getting knocked out in the first round. People saying they're soft. People saying they don't guard. Here is a physically tough basketball team that defends. They go to the board strong. They know their roles, and this backcourt is devastating. Let's talk about the next game and talk about Grant Hill for a minute uh, for Duke. Well, you know, in, in Grant Hill, you really have the consummate team player. Uh, you know, it's a great matchup in the game with Glenn Robinson as well as Hill. Oddly enough, I don't feel either person will guard the other one. Uh, but the roles are really different. Grant Hill uh, can do what he can for his basketball team in terms of scoring, passing the ball. Uh, Glenn Robinson really has a disposition to dominate for Purdue. Speaking of uh, Glenn Robinson, your team held him to the lowest output this season, 15 points. Uh, what was successful for you against him? I think the mistake you can really make with Purdue is to go out and just completely shut off Glenn Robinson. What you've got to do is also con contain Matt Waddell as well as Conzo Martin. We really tried to help off of Porter Roberts and their five man at the center position to give early help and trap Glenn Robinson. Rick, what are your keys to the game? What's your scouting report here? Well, I, I think that Duke has a little more experience, but I, I think Purdue's going to beat Duke. Uh, I think this is Purdue's year. I think they're going to the Final Four. I think that, that if Robinson can take good shots and not shoot a low percentage, I think that's the key, I think they will win. If he shoots a low percentage, Duke wins. You know, you talk so much about uh, styles at this time of the year during the NCAA tournament. Talk about the style difference between Purdue and Duke and why you think Purdue. Well, I think it's all styles. People say, well, one team versus the other. I don't think that that matters. It's style. Last night you saw Florida play their style against Connecticut, and Connecticut won the up-tempo. Today, the better transition team won in an up-tempo game. Duke can play either way. Duke can play slow. Duke can play fast. Purdue wants to play slow and take advantage of Glenn Robinson. All right, guys. The tip is at 6 o'clock here as we show you another shot of uh, Los Angeles and Lute Olsen with one of the youngest Wildcats and people celebrating with sisters and moms and dads and they're all over the floor there. That's what it's supposed to be all about. We'll be back with more from New York, from points elsewhere. After this, stay with us. As we develop the big dog sign, they're getting ready to go to work against Duke. Coming up six minutes from now, it's Duke and Purdue as March Madness is in full swing on the final weekend of the tournament. We'll be back. Welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee, on the campus of the University of Tennessee Southeast Regional Championship with the top seeded Purdue Boilermakers taking on the number two. Duke at stake today, a trip to the Final Four in Charlotte, and Duke has been there 